Alrighty, hello students who are working through the GT challenge question on lesson 2A. If you're struggling with that question 3, how do I, when I recognize that it is a quadratic model, how do I go ahead and figure out that equation? So I give you this PDF. Um, hopefully a lot of us could kind of figure it out, but a couple of us still had some questions. So let's go through this PDF. If I had this quadratic model, well, what if I didn't know it was a quadratic model? So the first thing I'm going to do is recognize, okay, well, there is a sequence. Is it arithmetic or geometric? Well, I notice that it's increasing and it's kind of increasing at a slower rate. So it's probably more arithmetic than it is geometric. So I'm kind of looking at that going, all righty, well, let's look for our differences. Well, when we realize, if you see the title, it's going to say a second difference. When I start doing those differences, I realize that there is a difference, but there's a pattern evolving even in the difference itself. So there must be a second difference. And so I'm going to go ahead and showcase that. So the first set of values is our first difference. And then there's differences between each of those. And this is what we call our first and second difference. And when we realize that we hit that second difference, we actually recognize that we have a quadratic model because the second difference is actually where that common plus two is actually occurring. So because I realize I have a second difference, I can solve this using a quadratic model. So I set up this formula right here. Let me get a pointer up. I set up this formula right here. And doesn't that formula look familiar? In fact, it is. It's the quadratic form, right? AX squared plus BX plus C. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is set this form equal to each of my terms. So we're going to start with 0, then 5, then 12. And I'm going to solve for each of the N values. So the first term should be equal to 0. The second term should be equal to 5. The third term should be equal to 12. And when I plug in that n value, it's going to be plugged in where the variable is. x squared, x, well, in this case, it's n squared and n. So we're going to plug it in for that variable. So if you notice that this is kind of a, a pattern that would evolve, and every time you're going to end up with those same uh, numbers going in, if your n is equal to 1, and then 2, and then 3, it's going to be a, it's a similar pattern every single time. Well, once you simplify it as far as you can simplify it. Hey, hold the phones. That looks like a system of linear equations. I can use a system of linear equations to solve for A, B, and C. Once I've solved for A, B, and C, they go back into that standard AX squared plus BX plus C. And if our A is one, then it's just gonna be an invisible one right there. Uh, B was two, so I'm gonna put it in front of the two, the uh, in front of the N that has nothing, so N, by itself, no squared, nothing else. And then the C value is just your constant, so it's negative three. So I end up with x squared plus two x minus three or n squared plus two n minus three. Ta-da! So if at this point you feel like you're confident enough to finish the solve on your own for the GT question, pause, try it, check your solution on this video. If you're like, I still don't get it, at any point when you're like, okay, maybe I think I got it, I suggest that you pause the video, attempt it, get your answer for yourself. Okay, but I'm going to start going through the solution for our GT question three, step by step. So I begin with the basic format of that AN is equal to AN squared plus BN plus C. And of course, we're going to do this for, oops, it's going to reset. Uh, it's going to go for n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3, and so on and so forth. Well, I need to set it up for myself using the information that we had, that pattern, filling in those n equals 1. So let's go ahead and set up that pattern, and I'm just going to set it up with a bunch of blanks right there. So boom, there's my pattern, set up, bunch of blanks. Well, what's the first one we want to deal with? 1, then the second one, 2, then the third one, 3. Uh, but what's happening here? Well, one's going to get squared, two's going to get squared, three's going to get squared. So let's reset those numbers one more time. Look at that. Now we have a four and a two, a nine and a three. And now I can remove those parentheses and end up with just our simplified form, a plus b plus c, using my system of linear equations. The only thing missing is what they're equal to. Well, I know what my first term is equal to, my second term, my third term, and so forth. So let's plug those in. So we're going to use our system of linear equation. And to give a cheat, we're going to use a calculator to do matrices. So you can use that with me. I'm going to showcase how I did it because I'm at home without uh, traditional technology. So again, we substitute in those values. And now I'm ready to plug it in. So where do I plug it in? I'm at home. I don't have a DI Inspire. Maybe I'm using this on my cell phone. That's not going to stop me. You guys are awesome citizens of the world. I know you can think critically. I know you can problem solve. So 
here's the matrix setup. Okay. All right. So, Miss Jag, maybe I had to rethink that. Now you've shown it to me. Maybe I kind of remember this, but I still don't have a TI Inspired, TI 84. Again, I know you're critical thinkers. I know you're problem solvers. I know that you're going to go to your handy dandy Google or whatever web search makes you happy if you're a binger, and you're going to figure out where you could get a matrix calculator. So, all I typed in is the following phrase matrix calculator system of linear equations. And I found this handy dandy little website, matrixcalc.org slash m. And on the left hand side of the screen, there's an option, a system of linear equations. And there's all sorts of matrix calculator stuff out there. You don't have to use this website. You could have used a different site because I know that you guys are critical thinkers and problem solvers. If you know to research first before trying to uh, solve these just, you know, by magic, right? So let me go to my solving system of linear equations. So here's that matrix calculator. Like I said, you can click on your system of linear equations and ta-da, once it loads, ta-da, you get your system of linear equations. I've already filled ours out. So let me go back up to the top. I've already filled ours out. One, 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 four, two, one, nine, three, one. I changed my variables to A, B, and C, and I set them equal to 15, 60, 135. I went ahead and clicked solve by Kramer's rule. For those of you who are like, whoa, what are all these rules? I don't remember how to solve matrices. You sure can click through these and play with these all that you want, but I'm just going to go ahead and get to the answer. So solve by Kramer's rule. If I scroll down, there's all of the solution for me, but here are my answers. A equals 15, B equals zero, C equals zero. Now I do want to give a shout out. Some kids went ahead and solved this by hand, and so I'm going to showcase a student's work. Uh, she solved uh, the very first part just like we did, and then she went ahead and set up her solve for her system of linear equations just right there. She solved it for herself. So I'm showing you that whether you used a calculator or you did it yourself by hand, it was possible and it was reasonable to expect this level of work because pre-cal students should already have come in with this expectation. And if you didn't, you should have been able to Google and help yourself out, right? Solving a system of linear equations. So. We know A is 15, B is uh, 0, C is 0. We could have gotten that information right here. So if I go back, I plug in that information. A is 15, B is uh, 0, C is 0. And then we throw that back into our standard AX squared plus BX plus C equation. Simplify it down. And we're left with just 15X squared or 15N squared, which is the more appropriate. Ta-da! We finished our work. All righty. That's all I got for you guys.